Hey, what's up everybody? Hello and welcome to another Shader Graph tutorial. In this one, we are going to look at this um, well, procedural shapes shader, uh, which you can do tiling. Uh, you can specify what's the how many um, sides for the the shapes. Oops. Never go below two. Uh, you have random width and height for each one of the shapes uh, and you can specify the range All right and you can specify um, the multiplier for the color and I'll show the color uh, in a bit and you have uh, what's the also the the, the rotation is is random and you can specify the maximum rotation speed. Um, also, there is this little thing where if you if you scale it on the Y, for example, you can see that it does the tiling by itself. And I think if you scale it from here, it will do it on the X. Let's do it. Oops. Let's do it from here. Yeah. Uh, it's not perfect though like as you can see the, the this side does not work well because uh, of how it is unwrapped but anyways let's just jump into it <coughs> all right so here let's zoom completely uh, okay here this is what I was doing I was just multiplying the scale of the object by the tiling that I'm doing which would increase the tiling as you scale the object. Simple stuff, right? Uh, all right, then we connect the tiling and offset to uh, a floor, and then we get only the X, so that we have these columns. And I'm gonna use these columns as an offset, just so that, for example here, you can see these columns are offsetted between each other so that not all the shapes are on the same uh, like basically they are not aligned right um, so you just connect uh, to a floor get the X uh, and uh, drop it in the seed of a random um, node between 0 and whatever you can see here if you change this yeah you can have parameter parameters for these but I don't think it's necessary and then you connect it to a vector 2 to the Y only and then to the offset of another tiling and offset and then you use this tiling and offset for two things the first one is um, you put it in a, f uh, a fraction node which would uh, loop every time right so if you have um, some some tiling um, specified before uh, let's say 20 so you will have 0 here and 20 here uh, instead of that fraction will do 0 to 9 0 to 9 0 um, sorry 0 to 0 0.99 0 to, or 0 to 1 0 to 1 0 to 1 etc all right and then uh, I want to do some rotation so we connect that to a rotation node a rotate node and for the rotation I want it to be um, random um, so uh, we will connect the tiling and offset to a floor and the floor will get us one value for each one tile right um, and then we use that we add uh, any number just so that uh, we we change the seed between this and the other random stuff so that for example um, it won't be the random uh, between the rotate speed and uh, the width uh, because I don't want uh, all um, wide uh, or or all large shapes to be faster in speed in in rotation than the uh, smaller ones, and just to do to do that, you just add any number to your seed, and plug it uh, again to a random range, um, and multiply the random range by the time, and then plug it to the rotation. I'm using radians. Um, it doesn't matter that much because we have a parameter for the rotation speed which is going to be 
connected to the max and the negative of that value is going to be connected to the minimum all right so that we have we can the, the the rotation can be clockwise or anti-clockwise right and that's gonna go to our polygon uh, node which is uh, you can find it in the procedural shape polygon right and just our um, shape sides uh, parameter to the sides of that node and then for the width and height it's the same stuff almost um, the floor uh, add some value to it plug it to the seed and actually this value should be different from that one um, plug it to the seed and then we have a parameter of vector 4 which uh, I split it so that uh, the first two values are for the minimum maximum of uh, the width and for and the, the rest are for the height and and that that makes this basically and then for the color we again use that same floor and add uh, some value to it connected to a random range and this is going to be between 0 and 1 because 0 is going to give us this value and 1 is going to give us this value um, or, or the other way around I can't remember this gradient is, is set to fixed so that it's a fixed um, fixed transition between each color and the, the other you can go with um, blend if you would like which would give a little bit more uh, variety, I guess. Oh well. Right, and then um, sample gradient, and you connect that to a multiply by our lightness, color lightness, and then uh, multiply our polygon with the color that we have. Right, and then we use that as the albedo. And we use the polygon, the just white and, and, and black, to the alpha. And obviously, I have um, uh, the surface set to transparent, um, alpha blend, and two-sided. And this is what? It's coming. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is what give us this. Right? And a little bit of a bonus, if you hit play, oops, they become kind of 3D-ish. And obviously the laptop uh, slows down. And this is, uh, I'm using um, a function called well, it's in the, the graphics library, uh, graphics.drawmeshinstanced, which takes a mesh and um, draws it multiple times with some offset in the, the position. Um, if you are interested in knowing how to do that, I can uh, make another tutorial for that. But yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. Uh, check out the links that are in the description for my assets and see you guys in the next one.